Hi everyone, so this is a bit of a different video for me. Normally I write about religion and history, but I really, really want to talk about Emperor Bellows from the Owl House. Not only is he one of the best Disney villains, but he's also one of the most interesting, which in part contributes to him being one of the best villains in TV. The first time we meet Bellos is in the two-part finale of season 1, in the episode Agony of a Bitch. I mean, witch. Sorry. Emperor Bellos is described as the most skilled witch in the Boiling Isles, even more powerful than Ida, who herself was the self-proclaimed most powerful witch in the Isles. When we first meet him, he consumes the magic of a palisman to feel better, implying that he has some sort of condition or curse. When we look around the palace and the boiling out as a whole, we get the feeling we're in the equivalent of the middle ages of our world, and perhaps this is because the inhabitants of the boiling Isles are witches. And as we all know, witches were kind of popular in the middle ages, though not for any good reason. Despite everything that Lilith or the Emperor has said, Bellus's goal isn't really to get Ida to join a coven system or lock her magic away. All he needed from her was the portal door, and that her life is, quote, inconsequential. While he tells this to our protagonist, he keeps making the claim that he can speak to the Titan, which is a near-extinct species of, well, Titans. We learn episodes before that the Boiling Isles is built on the body of a dead Titan. So let's just say, for this show, Titan is the equivalent of a god. He's a Titan for Titan's sake! Oh, Titan, I just took his name in vain. Ah, I did it again! In the episode Elsewhere and Elsewhen, Luz and Lilith travel through time, and never do so again, in an attempt to find a man named Philip Wittebane, who's said to be another human who got himself into the demon realm. From his journal, Luz infers that Philip knows a lot about the Boiling Isles from his travels and that he even knows how to build a portal door. We learn at the end that Philip, despite being a man from the 1600s, is actually Emperor Bellos. It's not direct confirmation per se, and the protagonists don't know it, but you have to be a real dumbass to not see it. His intense hatred towards witches. Those barbarians, those... There's witches. witches! A robe that looks similar to his robe when he becomes Lord Bellows, writings that look to be about making Grimwalkers, a skeleton on the table, which people think are Caleb's bones, his consumption of what we could see as multiple palacemen on the ground, Bellows' voice being overlaid on top of Philip's. <sighs> it doesn't matter. I just, just need to live long enough to see this through. Oh, and of course, the nose scar. We also learned that Philip's been carving glyphs on his arm, which allows him to perform magic at will, but makes him go... <laughs> In the cold open of Eclipse Lake, we finally see Bellus's face. We finally get to see the monster behind the mask, and yet we see... An old white man? This scene got me pretty uneasy, cause I thought for a moment that Bellos is gonna be one of those misunderstood yet redeemable villains, you know? People who believe in the phrase, the ends justify the means, but their ends are actually noble. And I think that was the goal of this scene, combine that with the soft music that plays and Bellos' reminiscence of the human realm. I thought, you know, it was meant to kinda throw you off guard. But there's something, but there's one thing I notice. It's his fucking ears. Why are they so small compared to hunters, or to other witches? In the most traumatizing episode, Hollow Mind, Luz finally figures out who Bellos really is. Well, Bellos reveals it to her as well. We also find out that Bellos, or Philip, was a witch hunter, and perhaps his brother Caleb, we'll get into that later, don't worry, was likely one as well. We also learn that the Day of Unity is meant to wipe out all witches in the Boiling Isles while Bellos finally gets to go home. From all that we know, we can also infer that Bellos was some sort of Puritan given that he lived in the 1600s. He was likely, like a lot of people who lived in his time, with a fear and anger towards witches, demons, and anything related to it. Now, today we know magic isn't real, I, I think anyways. But imagine sending an angry Puritan like him, who hates demons, fears witches, into a realm full of, well, witches and demons. Though Philip's journal suggests to us that he was more fascinated with the demon realm more than anything, it turns out he became set on a goal to wipe out all life in it, believing he would be a hero to humanity. It's revealed in the first episode that mythologies in the human realm are oftentimes influenced by stuff leaking from the demon realm, and so perhaps Bellus feared that would keep on happening. And in fact, it has happened. In the episode Thanks to Them, we learn that Caleb met a witch named Evelyn in the human realm. So Philip's mindset was to destroy the enemy before they destroy and conquer you. It's rather similar to how some people have this view that they have to convert the world to their religion to quote-unquote save them from themselves and their beliefs. Think of a colonist destroying everything an indigenous tribe has. 
It's also revealed in Hollow Mind, though it's already implied in previous episodes, that Hunter is a clone of Philip's deceased brother Caleb, except he's cloned as a 16 year old boy it seems. It's also shown many times that Bellows has had hundreds and perhaps even thousands of these failures as we see in the Titan's skull and in the secret chamber Bellows goes into in For the Future. This is where most people drew the line and decided that Bellows was an irredeemable villain. Bellos is a man layered with ironies. For one thing, he hates witches but uses magic. He's a human who has no bile sac but became the most powerful witch. Though this is probably because he's the only one who can perform all types of magic as most witches are sealed by their coven brandings and the collector taught him most of his magic. It's fascinating how Bellos becomes a very powerful witch, gains power and favor among the people, fooling them into doing his will all while being the only human in the demon realm. It's fascinating just how far this man has come and that he even succeeded in his end goal. In fact, it took a literal god to stop all the work that he's done into the day of unity. His evil intentions aside, all that he's done is pretty impressive. Bellos represents humanity's desire to conquer, change, and destroy everything. Take a look at Bellos not just as a Puritan but as a colonist. There's been a lot of books, TV shows, and movies that attempt to illustrate humanity's desire to conquer everything, destroy anything, and change what's natural. Bellos conquers the outs all by himself, establishing himself as the most powerful man among witches. Bellos destroys anyone and anything that gets in his way. And Bellos also changes what is natural, that is, which is performing all kinds of magic by locking them into a coven system, ironically saying it's the titan's will and is what's natural. Had it not been for Luz, the Boiling Isles would probably turn hostile towards all of humanity because of Bellos' actions, if they found out that he was a human and that he was actually evil. Luz therefore shows us that no, it is not in our nature as humans to be destructive like Bellows and that we can be curious, inquisitive, yet kind and peaceful. I initially thought Bellows was someone who rose to power in less than ideal ways but that he did so with good intentions to make the Boiling Isles a better place. That would certainly be something other people are willing to do but thankfully I was proven wrong. Bellos would have been easy to sympathize with as he grew up in a world with terrible ideologies that were spoon fed to him as he grew up. So it's understandable but not really. You see Bellos had 400 years to change. You know at some point you're kind of responsible for your own actions and beliefs. He's seen all that the demon realm has to offer yet he's never willing to change his mind. His brother Caleb however did change his mind and well it led to Philip killing him. I don't know what season 3 would have looked like if it had 20 episodes instead of 3 specials but nonetheless, one of the things that bugged me in season 3 was why the hell is Bello still relevant? He got stomped by the collector, deserved by the way, his plan got stopped and he got reduced into literal mush. He did somehow latch himself into Hunter but what was his goal from then? Come to think about it, what the hell was this man's goal after the day of unity? He's 400 years old, turns into a deer monster without palisman. And so if he goes back into the human realm, well, I doubt they'll call this thing a hero or even a human. So what was his goal? Does he just die after, believing that, you know, that's the end of his lifelong mission? I mean, it makes sense given, that he, what, he, given what he believes, but we're shown in thanks to them that he's still lurking and consuming life forms to stay alive. I initially thought Bellos would just end his life or die naturally and that would be pretty dark for a Disney show but I thought it made sense. He has nowhere to go, nothing more to do, with his own sense of humanity all gone. But once again I was wrong and I'm starting to sense a theme here. But anyways, Bellos' goal was apparently to possess the Collector but he changes his mind and possesses the Titan's heart instead showing us just how hellbent Bellos truly is to his goal and just how much he sunk himself into his own mud pit of delusions to be the hero of his own story. This is something the Owl House has made fun of and tackled a lot of times, all the way from the second episode. The idea of being the chosen one, the savior. This is perhaps something Luz and Bellos had in common, except Bellos' delusion isn't quite harmless to say the least. But anyways, that's all I have to say. If you like this video, don't subscribe because I don't do these kinds of videos at all. But I hope you enjoyed it anyways. Oh, and I didn't mention Christianity or anything once because the show never does so despite implying it given Bellos' background, but I think that's interesting because it perhaps shows that it has nothing to do with Christianity really. Anyone can do what Bellos does or anyone can do what Bellos did but in the name of something else and it's still the same. Just something I wanted to point out.